OS 2 Orchid recently released with tons of new features and improvements, which I covered in a dedicated video, where I also went a bit more in depth about Vanilla OS's components, but I decided to go a step further and use Vanilla OS for 30 days to test the features myself and see if it lives up to the hype. And here's how that went. Also, if my voice sounds a bit weird, I got sick recently. It's not great, but it is what it is. Let's get on with the video. Also, join the Penguin by Discord community to be notified of announcements and uploads, ask questions, participate in polls and decisions, and chat with me and the community about Linux, tech, and other topics. Link in the description below. Starting with the installation process, Vanilla OS has a really nice installer, but it's a little bit weird in some aspects. You need to make several reboots in the middle of installation, and steps are placed in interesting places sometimes. For example, setting up your password is done in the login manager, interestingly enough. The installation was decently fast compared to the previous version, although 20 minutes to install isn't the fastest installation speed for sure, and the installer was generally pretty snappy most of the time, except the initial installation stage when it was running off the USB stick. That was horribly laggy for some reason. Okay, so I've just installed Vanilla OS, and right off the bat there's already some differences. Like, instead of GNOME console, Blackbox is being used as the terminal over here, as you can see. And, uh, well, once this finishes... There we go. Uh, so that's Blackbox, and then also, um, the font is different, as you can see. Uh, I'm not sure what font this is, maybe Inter, but not entirely sure. So yeah, there's already uh, right out of the box some differences, but um, it's actually going pretty well so far. I'm liking Vanilla OS. It's very fast, very good experience. It's of course vanilla too. So yeah, um, it's going pretty well. On first boot, Vanilla OS was fast and snappy, and of course uses my favorite desktop environment, GNOME. Stock GNOME with nearly no extra modifications was nice to see, although there were some small changes I noticed. For example, it seems they have replaced GNOME Shell's default font, Cantarel, with Inter, which is more modern and up-to-date. And Inter will become the new default font when GNOME 47 releases, so interesting to see Vanilla OS has already switched. Speaking of GNOME versions, Vanilla OS uses the latest version, GNOME 46, but the file manager doesn't seem to be as up-to-date. One quirk I noticed is that the Files app, Nautilus, is uh, at 45 instead of 46. Uh, you can see this clearly over here by this indicator. It's supposed to be on the bottom over here in 46, but it's over here in 45. Uh, so that's interesting. I'm not quite sure why the file manager is slightly outdated, but I hope that'll be updated soon. And I just installed Discord, so let me open that. The file manager being a version behind really isn't the biggest deal, but Nautilus 46 introduced some really nice features like a dedicated button for system-wide search, the progress indicator neatly sitting at the bottom of the sidebar, no delay when switching between list and grid view, the path bar letting you click on the name of the current folder or a blank space to manually change the path, and so many more great new features. I wonder why they didn't include the latest Nautilus release. Maybe there was a bug or something, but Nautilus 45 works. It's not a deal breaker. Next, let's discuss the VSO subsystem, which is Vanilla OS's package manager and system shell. It's really easy to use and functions just like a normal package manager, except there's no sudo, and of course it operates in the subsystem instead of the main system. I can just type VSO install package name to install an app and VSO remove package name to remove one, just like most package managers, and I've already installed multiple packages like NeoFetch, HTOP, and even graphical apps like GNOME Tweaks. These programs run like they're native, and they even appear next to your Flatpak apps in the app grid. One funny thing you'll notice though is that apps you install will be called package name on VSO-Pico in the app grid. Also, you have full access to all packages in the Debian SID repos, which is great. 
You can also install ZEP packages graphically using the sideload utility, just like with APKs. But unfortunately, there is no obvious way to manage or remove packages in the VSO subsystem, like APKs, dev files, and Debian SID packages. Now, of course, apps in the subsystem are a lot less integrated. For example, if you install an app like GNOME Tweaks in VSO and try to enable maximize and minimize buttons, it will apply to other apps in the VSO subsystem, but of course not to regular flat packs or core vanilla OS apps, since those are in the real system and not in the subsystem, but most apps should work completely fine. Speaking of VSO, let's discuss Android app support. Vanilla OS advertises this feature a lot, but unfortunately, it can be confusing to set up. I first tried running an Android app right away, which didn't work. Even when the APK sideloader said the app installed successfully, I couldn't find the app anywhere. I tried reinstalling the APK app over and over to no results. At this point, I was wondering if something in my vanilla OS installation broke. Apparently, you can install Android apps with vanilla OS, so let's test that. If I just double click this APK, okay, install, and that's it. So if I go into my applications menu, okay, I don't see it. Let me try rebooting, maybe it'll appear. Okay, I'm not quite sure how the Android apps work here, because after a reboot, uh, they still don't show. So I guess I'm just gonna have to look more into how this works, but if I can get that working, that's pretty cool. Vanilla OS claims that the Android app should be right in the launcher, but um, not gonna lie, I'm not really seeing that over here. There is no Android apps here at all. So that is weird. I don't know if I didn't configure something, but uh, yeah. Turns out I didn't. A friend of mine found a Reddit post mentioning that apparently Wadroid, which Vanilla OS uses to run Android apps, is not even installed out of the box, and I need to run a special command in VSO to install and enable Android support. VSO Android in it. So you have to go through extra steps and use the terminal, which isn't very appealing for newbies, but the command worked and I was able to use Android apps. As for the experience, it's the regular Wadroid experience. You first have to wait a while for the Android subsystem to launch after you've clicked the app you want to open, and then from my experience, once the Android subsystem launches, you have to click the app you want to open again for it to actually open. The overall experience is a bit buggy at times and could definitely use more polish, but for the most part works with minimal issues. Also, since Wadroid is its own subsystem, it's of course not integrated into Vanilla OS's file system, so any files you download within Wadroid, from my experience, can't be transferred anywhere in your home folder. And some apps I tried to use, like Aurora Store, just wouldn't start at all. But at the end of the day, it lets you run Android apps, and that's really cool. It would, however, be really cool if Vanilla OS made a more integrated and polished solution. Since Android is Linux-based, they could technically add the necessary kernel modules, libraries, and whatever else is required for native APK support. However, that would take tons of effort and a lot of trial and error, so I can see why they wouldn't do that since they're already busy enough as it is, but a more polished and user-friendly in-house solution that works out of the box without needing any extra commands and tinkering would be really nice to see in the future. Now, let's discuss performance. Vanilla OS is overall really fast and snappy, even in intense workflows. I regularly work between many different apps, for example, one time I was working with Inkscape, many Firefox tabs, and Discord, and Vanilla OS managed it really well. Same can be said for gaming. Granted, I don't play the most resource-intensive games out there, I actually rarely play any games to be honest, I'm just not much of a gamer. But for the sake of testing, I played a round of Super Tux Kart, and it was very smooth. I also decided to test the battery usage. When I started playing Super Tux Kart, I had 37% battery, but when I finished playing, I had 31% battery. So yeah, not that great. This laptop's battery life in general is not that great, and that's reflected here. Next, let's move on to the multimedia experience. 
Some distros lack proprietary codecs, and it's inconvenient going through the hassle of installing all the codecs I need to play certain videos. And since vanilla OS is immutable, if it lacked proprietary codecs, it would probably be a pain in the ass to install those codecs. But luckily, it seems vanilla OS has all the necessary codecs. Also, usually to watch videos shot on iPhones and iPads, I need a specific GStreamer codec that it seems most distros don't have installed, and I can never figure out how to install. And as usual, when trying to watch those videos on GNOME Videos or Totem, the default video player for most distros, including Vanilla OS, I get a codec error. But interestingly enough, I was able to play the videos just fine using GNOME's new video player called Showtime, which is really beautiful and always works like a charm, and it seems to be the default video player in GNOME 47, which just released yesterday at the time of recording this portion of the video. Update, Totem doesn't give a codec error when playing iPhone video on vanilla OS anymore. It works perfectly fine now, so that's cool. Also, uh, vanilla OS plays 4K video in full screen without any lags or stutters. It plays it perfectly, so that's great to see. And now for the errors, I've basically had none, except for a few. Vanilla OS sort of advertises the ability to run apps like DaVinci Resolve, and normally in regular distros like Fedora, I can double click the setup wizard and get a warning about a bunch of missing dependencies, which I then install and try running the setup wizard again, then get a warning about a missing dependency even though it's already installed, then launch the setup wizard through the terminal with a special flag, follow the setup wizard and install DaVinci Resolve, tinker around in the terminal for any other errors I get, and then run DaVinci resolve, or at least I would be able to if this computer had a GPU. Well, I can't even get near that stage in vanilla OS because the setup wizard refuses to launch, and from what i found, it doesn't work on vanilla OS. Apparently, you have to create a distro box container and tinker around with that a lot, so I'm not sure why DaVinci Resolve is sort of, in a way, advertised as a working app. That seems a bit misleading, since a lot of effort is required, but it is what it is. Also, the camera app, Snapshot, can't detect my webcam for some reason, so I checked Snapshot's permissions in FlatSeal, and sure enough, it didn't have webcam access, so I enabled it, and Snapshot still didn't detect the webcam, so I restarted, and on a side note, sometimes vanilla OS can take a ridiculously long amount of time to restart, and when it finally restarted, it still didn't work. I'm not sure if I missed a permission in FlatSeal, but the older webcam app, Cheese, worked without any issues. Also, the indicator, which lets you know if your webcam is actively recording you, a feature introduced in GNOME 45, didn't appear while using Cheese, so that's weird. I also had a few minor freezes here and there. For some reason, Vanilla OS is stuttering on, it on this YouTube video. Uh, that I recently released, just watching it, and I noticed some, uh, like, it just, like, stops, just freezes at some points. It's, it's a bit weird. As you can see, there was just a freeze there. And there. Okay, Vanilla OS froze. Um, I can't move anything here, which is, um, a bit weird, but, uh, yeah, hopefully this doesn't happen too often. Okay, there we go. And some issues installing fonts. One issue that I have been having with Vanilla OS is I'm trying to install the Poppins font, and GNOME fonts opens normally, but when I click install, it just crashes every time. It never actually installs, it just, just crashes. Uh, let's try this with another one. Same thing. Same thing. It just, it just crashes. It doesn't work for some reason, so I guess I'm gonna have to manually install Poppins, which is a bit, um, inconvenient, but what can you do? So yeah, I I'm not sure why this happens. Maybe it doesn't have access to the fonts directory because if I do remember correctly, it is immutable. So I'm gonna have to find the mutable fonts directory if there is one then. Yep, just as I thought, I cannot create a new folder 
for Poppins. I cannot drag my Poppins files in. I, uh, yeah, this is an immutable directory for some reason, which is a bit stupid. Um, okay, never mind. In dot local slash share slash fonts in the home directory, it appears that every time I clicked install and it uh, failed, it did actually install the fonts, but like, instead of showing installed, it put multiple copies for some reason, which is weird, but whatever. I'll just now copy all of my, uh, well, let's just delete these real quick, except for rope, because that's a certain font that I need. Um, let's do that and copy all of the Poppins fonts minus this text file. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, and put them in here. All right, perfect, there we go. And also an issue with trying to unlock my computer. Okay, so uh, my computer I locked because I had to go somewhere. And now when I'm trying to turn it back on, it's not really turning on, so I guess my only option is to force reboot. Okay, once again, my computer refuses to turn on, which is um, a bit of an issue. I mean, like, I could turn it on if I restart, but I can't wake it from sleep, which, uh, or suspend. I'm not sure if it's locked or suspended or whatever, but uh, yeah, Vanilla OS, if you're seeing this, you may want to fix this issue. And also some graphical glitches. Okay, some graphical glitches. And look at that, it's on the beat too. Okay, fine. I did have a few errors here and there, but they were minor errors anyway, and they were few and far in between. Other than that though, I've really had no errors that I can recall, and Vanilla OS has been an extremely stable and solid experience. Vanilla OS is the first immutable distro that I've ever used on real hardware, and it's been a really smooth and stable experience out of the box. It just works. I would just open my laptop, log in, and get to work, and it works perfectly. I didn't run into any weird errors or anything. Vanilla OS also auto-updates in the background, which is nice and convenient. Overall, it was a great experience, and I would definitely recommend it to people. But not to newbies. Not yet, at least. It's really close to being a great beginner distro. But the Android app support, VSO subsystem, and the overall experience could be improved for sure. But for such an ambitious release, Vanilla OS knocked it out of the park and did a great job. Subscribe if you like my content and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you really like my work and want to support me, I have a Penguin Byte channel membership with two tiers. A King Penguin tier, which gives you a Penguin Byte badge next to your username, access to exclusive emojis, and priority reply to comments, and an Emperor Penguin tier, which gives you everything in the King Penguin tier, plus shoutouts, members only content, VIP Discord access, and more. Check them out by clicking the join button below. Thank you to my YouTube members for supporting my work, and all of you guys for being part of the community. And thanks for watching, see you next time.